Hello, my name's Pank Patel. I'm head teacher at Wood Green High School College of Sport, Maths and Computing in Wensbury in the West Midlands. Despite being in a deprived area, this school has been successful in achieving two outstanding Ofsted reports. We must be doing something right, so why not come in and have a look? Wednesbury is about 10 miles north of Birmingham, in one of the five most deprived areas of the country. Unemployment and benefit dependency in the area are nearly double the national average. But although students at Woodgreen High School arrive in year seven with below average results, by year 11, they're consistently achieving above average. I loved your use of the word morbid. What does morbid mean if something's morbid? Peter, what do you think? It relates to death. Absolutely, relating to death. This progress is reflected in the school's contextual value added score, which has been between 1,022 and 1,043 in the past few years. So what's behind the school's success? Our school's secrets of success. Number one, a positive score ethos. Creating a positive ethos and an appropriate learning environment has been key to our success. That's happened over a long period of time. Our young people see the school as a very stable institution where they can have a whole variety of opportunity, which they don't perhaps have at home. They don't have that discipline, perhaps. What you are going to be doing when the time is up is picking your best happy words and your best unhappy word, and we're going to get them onto the board. School gives them an environment on which there are very clear, defined rules. And believe it or not, our young people do like that. Sometimes they rebel against it, but they do like to have the structure. I think only about 9% of our parents have been in higher or further education. So I think in the first instance, it's essential that you send a message that achievement and success is available to all the students. So you're raising their aspirations. And backing that up is our enrichment programme to get students to get more involved in school life, to be part of this community, which helps build their confidence and self-esteem. Our daughter, when she left year six, she was really shy and timid. But I've got her, she's really come out of a shell here and I've got her to do more things she never dreamed of doing, martial arts and stuff. She's doing really well and confident. We've had a few letters saying how well she's been doing, as you know, which is refreshing. Sometimes all you hear is the bad things, you know, oh, she's got detention, oh, she's got this, which she hasn't. <laughs> but it's, it's nice to hear the good things that they're doing as well. And you have personal letters, we've had quite a few. Our school's secrets of success. Number two, providing a curriculum that meets all our needs. Rather than just provide GCSE courses, we have extended that choice to include more vocational type qualifications like GMVQs and now BTECs and also hopefully in the future diplomas as well which have been able to engage a wider range of ability of students in their learning but also learning to succeed because they've offered um, a pathway to achieving GCSE equivalents and therefore they've been able to go on to continue with their studies. The option choices that we give to the pupils are the same for everybody regardless of ability. We don't say that there's a certain subject that certain pupils cannot pick because of they're not going to get five A stars to see for instance. We give everybody the same choice and then we use an interview process looking at past data and so forth to help inform those choices. Our school's secrets of success. Number three, focusing on staff recruitment and training. Recruiting staff to come and live in this sort of area is not the easiest task. So what we have to do is grow our own teachers. Now we have a very strong programme of initial teacher training with a whole host of different teacher training providers. We have a programme in which around 20 or so trainees come into school every term. If we spot a good quality trainee, we will often take the risk and employ them at Wood Green, in some cases without a job because in our succession planning exercise, 
we would have looked across our staff and we'd have said, well, so-and-so might be moving on, so-and-so might be retiring, and we take those risks and we plan well in advance of the following September. We've got any double bonds there? No, so that one will go on easy. The training I've received has been excellent. We had weekly meetings and right from the start introducing us to the various different um, policies and procedures that run in the school, going from behaviour through to the literacy, through to the gifted and talented. It was extremely well organised in terms of the expectations of the pupils are very clearly outlined. They know what's expected of them when they come to school and as members of staff we also know how we're expected to, to deal with the pupils and deal with our different classes. OK, well done. In the last 10 years we've appointed 74 NQTs, most of whom have been on placement here. And the advantage there has been that because as, as a trainee they've actually gone through some form of induction, their training and their initial training has actually been in the wood green way. So moving into a permanent job here as an NQT has actually been a smoother transition than recruiting somebody who doesn't really know anything about the school. Right, so you do your bit then prayer, okay? Always there are certain roles which are aimed at people who have only just sort of you know been new to teaching, therefore giving them a chance to build up a wealth of experience and progress through the levels of, of middle management. An example in my case was being literacy coordinator in my uh, in my NQT year, and so therefore that meant that I gained experience of managing a certain number of staff and therefore could progress through into the English department. And so you're continually you know reinventing if you like um, you know the staff and sort of and definitely uh, rejuvenating people if you agree you need to hold up the green card and if you disagree you need to hold up the red card and we need as part of my training at Wood Green I have access to something called the innovation unit I can actually have cover for my lesson and go and observe another lesson of good practice at any key stage and at any department, so different subject areas, and that allows me to not worry about time constraints of observing good practice, and then I can go back to my own department and discuss those good practices. What you've now got is you've got four minutes with your group to get and move around as a whole group, not in pairs anymore. Each one is numbered. One. Today we've been using Classwatch, which is a camera system which allows people to observe the lesson from outside the classroom. I think it's, it's incredibly useful to look at for your own practice and to evaluate what you're doing, because often you'll do the same things in a variety of lessons and, and not pick up on things that you're doing, and it allows you to really reflect on what you're doing. The first thing and the only thing that you need at the moment is a series of post-it notes that have got I understand that, that sometimes it can be difficult to realise that you're being watched through a camera and that could make some people uncomfortable. However, we found it really useful um, to help train new staff and pro uh, professional development and to allow people to be observed without having uh, the intimidation of an observer in the room. Our school's secrets of success. Number four, removing barriers to learning. It's a hard area for the kids to live in, social-wise, outside of school. Some of the children just haven't got... They've got nobody to talk to, nobody to care for some of them. Not all of them, but there are some kids who, who need that bit of special um, encouragement and caring, and I think us as a school do do this. Each of the student support managers is a fully qualified counsellor, and using their counselling skills, they can actually ensure that that young person is able to speak to them quite openly about the barriers that they might have to learning. I've been to Utre Primary School, St George's Primary School. Mercedes had been to seven primary schools. My biggest issue at the moment is if Mum does move out of the area, will Mercedes move schools, which Mercedes is quite concerned about. Children need to have an opportunity to talk about issues, problems, because if they're in the head, they can't go into lesson and just concentrate on learning. Building the relationship between school and home is absolutely essential. We need to make sure that when parents ring up, we address that concern. We need to be there, we need to be seen to act. And it's working in that collaborative way that's important.
Amy went a bit off the rails. She started smoking and um, being very secretive and moody um, at home, so I caught the score. Right. You're not losing your temper? No. Good. I can calm myself down now better. Brilliant. Than I was before. Ever since then, with Mrs Price's encouragement and help, her attitude's completely changed. I spoke to Miss Price and she helped me with what to do at home, how to calm down, how to stop my temper. And, and she, like, my mum says she's been checking up on me, which has made me do better in, in lesson, which has helped me at home as well. Error school secrets of success. Number five, creating a culture of learning through sport. Being a specialist sports college makes this school a success because it gives our young people self-belief. It gives them self-confidence and that self-esteem is taken into the rest of their school life. They're running around and they're trying to score around at fourth and they're like that. What do you need to do as a team? Um, well, first, communicate. Yeah, shout at her. Mariam, what are you doing? Yeah. I think sport in general, it's all about communication and teamwork and as a school and in every lesson, the pupils have got to be able to work as a team and be able to communicate with each other. It's just creating a positive ethos, really, around the school in relation to sport. I'll get up about 6.30 and come to school about 7 o'clock every day. I'm here so early because I like to play table tennis and meet my mates at school. If I was at home, I'd just be watching TV. We have people that compete for the school, for the county and for the country. But it's not just about that. At uh, Wood Green, we put a heavy focus, for example, on learning through leadership. Through programmes like the Junior Sports Leader, they learn how to be sportsmen, they learn how to be organisers, they learn how to be leaders. For example, we've got a number of uh, boys that don't play football, but they are involved in football on a weekly basis. They are referees. To be honest, I'm absolutely awful at football. When I was, I played at under nines um, and I, I stood for a year on the sidelines because I, I wasn't that good. They suggested that uh, I went into football refereeing. I've recently been promoted to level four um, and therefore that's uh, just inside of the semi-professional game. I'm hoping to become eventually one day a Premier League referee. When we looked at our behaviour referral system, we saw that we were having a lot of referrals in afternoons for things that had gone on at lunchtime. So we had to think about what we could do, and other schools have cut their lunch times down to try to resolve the problem. We went the other way. We still have an hour's lunch time, and we train a lot of young leaders to run an active lunchtime programme. All of the facilities are given over to the young people, and leaders are in control. Netball. Make sure it's returned before the end of lunch. So there's no year 11s taking footballs off year 7s because there are always ample footballs available. The advice I'd give to any school head teacher or any leadership team is the small things, everyday things that you do with the children that make the difference. For us, all of those little things matter. For example, on a day-to-day -day basis, every child being in uniform correctly, no makeup, no jewellery. It may seem insignificant, but it establishes what this school is about. We're here for learning, and nothing else can interrupt that. Mm -hmm.